here and now to me seems obvious in all of the psychological wonderment to life and fucked upness to life that seems obvious to me what is unknown is interesting to me i'm stanley castleman and my studio is at modified arts in jersey city new jersey i grew up in phoenix arizona uh, parents were divorced when i was one and uh, i grew up running around a warehouse eating candy all the time I was uh, very curious about art as a kid, but equally interested in football, girls, skateboarding. I was never focused until ceramics in high school. Instantly fell in love with it. Went to college, and there I had 24-7 access to the studio and used it all the time. And really fell in love with making art. My ceramics professor, David Furman, one day looks me square in the eye and says, Stanley, you should take a painting class. And I said, David, I don't know how to paint. He said, you don't realize it, but you're a painter. Very first painting, I will never forget. I have a white canvas, four feet square, took red on a paintbrush and went And there it was, done. None of the agita of ceramics of it's gotta dry slowly, it's gotta be covered and this and that and that. And lo and behold, I became a painter. The first artist that really uh, made sense to me was Jackson Pollock. I was 21, walked into MoMA for the first time in my life and saw his 131. That was a life-changing experience for me. It made me realize that a painting could be transcendent and a painting could be a gateway to another reality. That's one of the things always circling in my consciousness is to make paintings that have that sort of vast symphonic meaning that are entities to, to enter that can change consciousness. considered myself an artist. It took a long time. I had a grandmother that said, I'm gonna help you, who believed in what I did, and that was my support system for at least a better part of 10 years. For me, non-objective abstract work has the power to be transcendent. As soon as you see reference to objective reality, you're brought right back to the here and now in, I think it was third grade in the planetarium. The teacher would project the constellations and I thought that's what space is like. And that where the stars are, are on this dome that surrounds the Earth. And I thought, well, what if I could fly in a spaceship and get to this dome? What would I find if I knocked through it? I want to learn something new. I'm working on some non-objective abstract paintings. I am using uh, a squeegee. I'm using a piece of plexiglass connected to a piece of wood. This particular take on the squeegee is something I have borrowed from Gerhard Richter. I have never actually built a squeegee the way that he has. The way he has is magic. To have this flexible edge, it, it's a huge palette knife. You can move large volumes of paint and get unbelievable effects that you really couldn't otherwise do without maybe a, you know, a teeny tiny paintbrush spending hours and hours and hours. And I am much more interested, I want it now. The whole thing with light actually started back in college. I was studying abroad, sitting in Westminster Abbey, looking at the stained glass windows. Nice Jewish boy in a big church, and it just hit me. I wanna make paintings that have light that shine through color as opposed to reflecting off of color. Evolution water 
was a piece loosely programmed based around uh, Mark Rothko, his imagery of bands of color. For 10 seconds, you would see no change. Over a minute, you might notice subtle change. Over two minutes, it's changed completely. I was in year six of a seven-year lease. Uh, see an email blurb about the opening of the Kaminsky Foundation on six. I thought, what the hell? Uh, when I walked onto the fourth floor, I am not exaggerating, within 30 seconds, I knew I was coming here. To have this kind of ceiling height above ground level, it's you know, rare to find this. So it, it was the space, the light, the community. At that time, I think there was eight artists. The chance to be around real artists of significance. When I went home that Sunday, told my wife, she was like, are you nuts? You can't get people to Brooklyn. How in the hell are you gonna get them to Jersey City, New Jersey? I said, wait till you see it. And every person that I told, same response, and when they have come here, they're like, oh my God. In my opinion, we are here because we evolved and we literally are stardust, everything here. And evolution is fascinating. All of the things that had to happen in order to have this moment right now, it is so statistically unlikely, it's wild. The paintings that I'm making now are a lot about layering and layering and layering and then unearthing. Literally using the squeegee to unearth prior layers, which if you could get a little teeny tiny camera there, you'd see how probably things are probably rolling and mixing as the squeegee's moving over the surface. And as soon as it's done and I've digested it, I want to start the next painting. Uh, what drives me is I want my next painting to be my best painting. Do I always succeed? No. In fact, I rarely succeed. But that is my objective. If it's not magnificent, on some level, who needs it? The world doesn't need another mediocre painting by me or anyone else. The painting itself sings. There's a magic, there's a harmony that can be very subtle, it can be very powerful. If it doesn't make the hair on the back of my neck stand up, I'd want anybody to, to, to see it.